Hi, my name is Jan Smith from CompuSo with Jan. I also have a Yahoo group called CompuSo with Jan. What you're looking at are some alphabet designs in cross stitch that I created for the holidays. And I'll just scroll down the window here a little bit. These are on sale on my website as a full complete set, or you can purchase the letters individually. Here are a couple photos of the gift tags that I created using a couple of the letters. And these letters are just over three and a half inches tall, so they fit perfect right here. Since it's December, I decided to create this quick video in my Premiere Plus software program just for this purpose. The gift tag has a pocket in the back for your gift cards, and of course you can just use this as a luggage tag or a business card also. Just leave off the ribbon. When I said quick lesson, I meant a short video starting in the Premiere Plus Create module. You'll be working in the Draw tab, creating the background rectangle shape that makes this design. I'm going to go back to the first picture. Then you'll be working in the Quick Create tab to put the stitch points in the shape. That's all the quick digitizing you need. From then on, you'll copy and paste the design a couple times, and you'll resize them, and then finish in the Premiere Plus Embroidery Extra module. There are two PDF files that accompany the video. The video is the lesson, but you need the templates. One of the PDF files has templates in it for cutting your fabric. These templates are very important because they are the guide to cutting your three pieces of fabric which make up your gift tag. The other PDF file has images that will show you how to embroider the design at your machine. The lesson's very fast and easy to create, and it embroiders completely in the hoop in a very short time, depending on the speed you select. My design embroidered in five minutes. Even though I will be working in the Premiere Plus software, this gift tag can be done in any software using the same technique. So let's get started. Well, now I'm in my Premier Plus Embroidery Extra, and you can see that right up here in the title bar. Before I even opened up my Embroidery Extra, I, I clicked on my Premier Plus Configure icon down here in the taskbar, and I reset all my modules. Even though I reset all the modules, I went ahead and changed the appearance just for my screen. I like a white background, and you can put whatever color you want, or you can just leave the default and I definitely wanted a dark grid. We're going to be using the grid a lot to create this design. So I just clicked on this little down arrow and I just chose a dark color. The dark blue right here works best for me. And then I just clicked OK. okay. So now we're going to go into our Premiere Plus Create module. And we get there by clicking on this little flower down here. It's a little rose and we click on that one time and this is going to start the Express Design Wizard. Takes a little while when I'm creating a video for it to come up, but it will. Okay, we're in the Express Design Wizard and we need to choose the option that we want for here. And we're going to start with a new design and no picture. Then click Next. We want the draw window, so click on Next again. And we want to change the hoop. I've already changed my hoop. And all you have to do is click on the change hoop right here and click, put a little check mark and enter the hoop size and type in 106 millimeters for the width and 120 millimeters for the height and then click OK and then click Finish. And that puts us in the draw window. Now we need to go over some settings that we're going to be using in the draw tab. First thing I want to do is click on View. This is the View Window tab. And you can see the size of the hoop here, 106 by 120 millimeters. And we need to set the grid. And right here is where you type in the grid. I already have it set and it's for 2 millimeters. Now another thing you might want to do, and I'm going to do this, is I'm going to click on the 2D View. This is going to let you see the stitch points. And this will help you if you need to do any editing on those stitch points. The next thing I want you to do is click on File. And right down here we have Preferences. And make sure you have a check mark in Color Tolerance because we're going to be using the Color Tolerance along with the Quick Create. Also make sure there's a 
check mark in the tie off before and after the trims. Now let's click back on the draw tab. The first thing I want to do in the draw tab is put snap to grid on here. We're going to create a shape here and I want the shape to snap to grid lines because there, that way there's not going to be any guesswork. So all I have to do is click on this little down arrow and select snap to grid. Now your window is going to be completely filling your monitor and this will be showing up at the top of your toolbar. Mine doesn't because I have a smaller window so I'm just going to click on snap to grid. Make sure you have snap to grid. The next thing we're going to do is select a color for our lines. We're going to be working totally with lines, no fills at all. I've already selected black for my color that I want up here in the color select in the control panel, but if you want to make a different color you just left click on any color to get the color of your lines. You're not going to be using fills in this lesson, but I just wanted you to know if you do decide to use fills, just use a right mouse click. If I right mouse click, I get a fill color right there, but I'm just going to take that off by clicking on no fills. And I do want my black color. Now I'm going to create my shape. Right here is the icon for shapes, and I'm going to left click on that, and I'm in shape number one, but I want shape number 14. So I'll just click on the little down arrow and just move my slider down till I get to number 14 and then select it. We have two options on how to select our shape. We can either draw from the center, which means I'd hold my cursor down and draw up and around, or we can draw from one of the corners, and this is the one I'm going to use because I already know I want this on the first grid line inside the hoop. I just need to click right here close to that first grid line and it will snap to that grid line, so I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to move over to the first grid line on the right hand side. I'm going to move down to the first grid line at the bottom and look at it really close. It looks like I've got all my rectangle on the first grid line and I'm going to let go. So let's just verify this since I was so zoomed out. Here's the hoop grid line and the first grid line inside the hoop. Let me move this down. Try to go slow. Here's the hoop grid line and the grid line inside the hoop. Same thing here. This is the hoop grid line. This is the first grid line inside the hoop. And the same thing up here. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom to fit. And that's all we have to do to create our background shape. I do want to save this though. I want to save this as a drawing in case I want to bring it back into the software and use it again or edit it. In order to save your drawing, you need to have it selected. And over here in the film strip, I just click on that one time, and then I'm going to click on my file, Save as Drawing. And when I click on Save as Drawing, I'm going to save it in a folder that I created just for this lesson. And I have it saved as gift tag 01 for QB. You can see that right down here. I'm not going to save over this. I'm just going to go and cancel, but I want you to know that's what you're going to do. And if you ever need to bring it back in, you would click on File and you would insert your drawing or open the drawing. If you open the drawing, then you're going to replace any drawing that's already in the software. But if you were to insert a drawing, you're just going to insert it into the current project. Well, we're through working in the Draw tab, so now I want to click on my Quick Create tab right there. We don't want a pattern fill, so just left click up here at the top of the pattern fill and now it is disabled. But we do want a running stitch. We don't want satin line, but we want a running stitch. So click on that little down arrow and click on Running Stitch. Over here in the toolbar, and I'm just going to click on this little down arrow and show you mine. You will see fill area in line as well as satin area. Mine isn't showing again because my screen is smaller than yours, but you would just click on fill area in line and verify the length of your stitch. We're just going to leave it as a default, which is two millimeters, and I'm just going to say OK. Now I'm going to zoom in on my background shape. I'm using click 
zoom to rectangle and just zoom in here at the top because we're going to be using this quick stitch let me just right click to take off my zoom icon there or my zoom on my mouse and quick stitch is what we're going to be using in the quick create to create our design so what I need to do is just hover my mouse over the line and when it turns to a normal cursor I'm just going to left click one time and that's when the color tolerance comes up well when the first time I did this I just used the default of low and I had some of my stitch points outside of my line here so I didn't want to have to keep moving everything around so I just selected high on my color tolerance and said OK that doesn't mean you won't have a few of those, but this is going to make it a little bit better. And I'm just going to right click to take off my quick stitch. Now I want to see that line, so I'm going to go into view. And right over here you have background. You have different stages of viewing your background drawing. And I'm just going to put my cursor on the little slider and move it all the way to the left. We're still in 2D view, and you can see the stitch points now. Let me just move this around or I can use my overview window and just use the little box inside the overview window and move this around so you can see the stitch points. So I'm just going to zoom to fit and I'm going to click on my home tab. Notice here on the home tab in your toolbar you have edit points which means you can click on one of these points and edit it and move it around. You have insert points, which means you can insert one if you need to, or delete points. So this is your color number one, which is going to be the running stitch placement line. These stitches are going to be embroidered on your stabilizer. This is going to be a guide to where to place your fabric. I'm going to copy this right now because I want two more of these. So since I'm in the Home tab, I can just click on Copy. Now I need to put another color in here so the machine will stop. So I'm just going to right click on my object number 2 and I'm going to insert a color change and I'm just going to select red. Now I can paste the rectangle that I copied right underneath the red so that the machine will stop and I'm just going to paste it and you can see it right here but I want this to be a different size. I want this to be a little bit smaller than my running stitch to so tack down my fabric. So I'm going to click on Modify Block right up here in the toolbar. Actually, I'm going to click on the little down arrow and I'm going to select Modify Block. And I'm just going to take this down to 98%. Whoops! I forgot I had Proportional <laughs> selected. It, it moved both the width and the height. I want it 98%. Sorry about that, and I'm just going to click OK. So now let me zoom in so you can see that you have, let me right click to get off my zoom, you have your tack down, your placement line right here, the black, and the red are your tack down stitches. So I'm just going to zoom to fit again. So again I need to put in a color change. We've already copied the running stitch up here, the number two object. So I just need to put in another color here. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to insert another color change and I'm just going to select this brown color and say OK. Now when you're embroidering this and you embroider the very last stitches, if you don't have this a little bit smaller than the tack down stitches, the tack down stitches could show through your fabric once you've turned the gift tag. So again, we're going to paste this, we're going to paste the original one, and then we're going to go back up to the color, to the modify block, and then modify block, and we'll take this down to number 97. We're going to do 97%. That's just enough inside the tack down stitches to make sure that these are not going to show once you've turned your gift tag. Again, let's just click on the zoom in icon and just zoom in and take a look at these. So we have placement line. We have tack down stitches to tack down the first piece of fabric. And then we have the the main stitches that are going to hold everything together. These are all at 2.0 millimeters, but I like to have my running stitch a little bit longer. I like the stitches a little bit longer. 
only because it's just being placed on the stabilizer and you don't need to have it a smaller stitch so I'm just going to go ahead again this time I'm just going to right click I was going to go back up here in the toolbar but then I would have to be clicking on the little down arrows but I'm just going to right click on here and show you that you can click on properties and this is where you can change your length I'm just going to change this to four you can make it a little bit bigger if you want to but this is plenty long enough so I'm just going to say OK and with our last running stitch design I'd like this to embroider a couple times simply for the same reason of holding everything together when we're going to be turning this so I'm going to just click on right click again on my number six object go to my properties and right up here I can click on this little down arrow next to running stitch and I can select double stitch and then just say OK what that's going to do is going to sew all the way around our rectangle one way and then sew all around it another way and that's going to hold the fabric in the stabilizer together so I'm just going to zoom to fit now all we have to do is save this just click on the save as icon right up here in your quick access toolbar and save it as gift tag 01 EDO it's an EDO file and that means this is your working file I'm going to just save over it. I'm replacing it. Now that's what we have to do to create this quick gift tag. Now there's another thing you could do and I'm not going to do it in this video but if you've taken any of Lindsay Ruber's lessons, she's my colleague and also the moderator on my CompuSo with Jan Yahoo group, she created cathedral window design and she put in what's called non-color stops which means you have a stop in here but it doesn't have a color it's just going to tell you and you put information in when you do a non-color stop on what you want that stop to mean for instance add ribbon or add third piece of fabric something like that so um, if you're taking any of Lindsay's lessons you might want to check with that and you can find out information on my CompuSewage and Yahoo group but since we save this now I want to take this into my Premier Plus X Embroidery Extra to export it as an embroidery design. You could export it by clicking on export right up here but I want to add my design to it so I just as soon take it into embroidery extra. So what I need to do is copy it. If I click on this little down arrow you have two copies, two options. One is copy, just plain copy and that's to copy and paste right in here in your Premiere Create module. If I click on copy of this, I will not be able to copy it into my Premier Plus Embroidery Extra. But when you copy embroidery, then I will be able to place it into my Premier Plus Embroidery Extra. So I'm going to click on copy embroidery. And I have already opened up Premier Plus Embroidery Extra. And I have the icon down in my computer taskbar. And I'm just going to click on that. And then right up here, I'm in my Premier, Premier Plus Embroidery Extra. And I'm just going to... I'm on the home tab I'm going to click on this little down arrow and put paste into center and there's the design it's three colors you have three color stops I pulled the window down so you can see them and now all I have to do is export this as an embroidery design so I'm just going to click on export and I'm going to save as a VP3 and I will optimize my stitch length I'm just going to use the defaults and what I didn't mention is you could put some notes in here uh, as to what you did with the design, a little bit of notes on how you create it or on how you're exporting it, and it will be saved. Those notes will be saved if you save as a VP3 embroidery file. They will not be saved if you save in any other format. So that's just something for you to know, and I'm just going to click on OK. I've already saved the design as gift tag 01 and I have an X there so I know that it's export I'm not going to save it again so I'm just going to cancel out of here and I'm just going to cancel out of here now if you have another machine that you're going to embroider this on let's say a baby lock or a brother you need to make sure that the hoop size here is the hoop size for that particular machine so let's go up here right up here in our toolbar and click on change hoop and I'm going to change this from my FOV Creative Vision. I'm going to select an Alissimo because I have the Alissimo. You're going to select a hoop size right in here.
and I'm going to select the 180 by 130 because the next one down is 100 by 100 millimeters and that's not large enough and I'm just going to say OK make sure it's centered in the hoop and it is so now when I get ready to save this or export this I'll just click on export make sure I have the PES format in here I just clicked on this little down arrow and selected PES I am still going to optimize the stitch length I'm not going to change the hoop it's already changed you can see right down here I changed it in embroidery extra let me move this up so you can see it good enough I want to make sure I have file version 10 and then I'm just going to say OK I've already saved it as gift tag 01x for export PES and if you haven't done that what you need to do is put your cursor down here backspace under entitled untitled type in the gift tag 01 or whatever you want to call it and then just export it I'm not going to do that since I've already saved it I'm just going to cancel out of here I'm just going to cancel out of here Now what I want to do is to bring in one of my cross stitch letters. You can see one of the letters right here in the hoop. I clicked on insert. When you want to add a design to an existing design in your work area, then you need to use insert. If you wanted to clear the work area, then you would use open. And you could get that through file. File open. Let's go back to the home tab. It comes in not centered because it's a second object brought into the work area so you need to center this in the hoop again my window is smaller than yours but center in the hoop is right up here let me just pull the window out so you can see it a little bit better have to see it quite a bit there we go right up here is alignment and my letter is selected and all I have to do is click on center in the hoop I'm just going to move my window back in the so you can see everything better. So now I have my design, the letter that I brought in, and if I click on previous design, you'll see the gift tag. So I have two files in here. But what I need to do is put them together in order to save them as an embroidery design together. So right up here you have combine. Just click on the little down arrow and then combine all. And let me move my window down a little bit more and you'll see that now I have five different colors. The first color stop is your placement line on your stabilizer. The second color stop is the tack down stitches. The third color stop is the final embroidery design that embroiders two times to hold all of your fabric and your stabilizer together. Then I have the two designs or the two color stops for the design. Well, we want the colors, the designs to embroider before the very last color stop. So we need to do this in the Modify tab. So I'm going to click on my Modify tab. And all I have to do to put them in the correct color sewing order is to click on the number three, which is the final embroidery stitching and move it down to the bottom of the list. So I've selected it. I'm going to move it down, down to it's at the very bottom of the list. So now I'm going to go back to my Home tab. I'm going to click on the Design Player so you can see how this is going to embroider. I'm just going to click on this Play. There's the placement line. The tack down stitch is right inside. That's the 98% then the design is going to embroider and I'm just going to grab this little slider and move it to get both colors actually I'm going to pause this if I can so you can see the jump stitches these are actual jump stitches but they're not dotted line jump stitches it's just jumping from one part of the design to the other now when you're working on a cross stitch design you do not want to have your machine trim the jump stitches in a cross stitch design because it could easily pull out the stitches. So be sure you're at the machine and when it does this jumping you're going to just cut those stitches. You don't want any of your cross stitch designs to pull out so just remember that. So I'm just going to continue with the color. 
and I'm just going to let it finish right now. It's going to finish up the second color of my cross stitch letter. Then you can see it's embroidering the very last part of the design and you can see the sliders moving across here and you don't see anything happening because it's just going to embroider over that line again. So I'm just going to cancel. This time I'm going to go ahead and put some notes in here. You click on this little pin right here and this little window pops up. I'm just going to make it quick. I'm going to say gift tag with letter K. I could have put cross stitch letter whatever and just say OK. And there you can see it there. You can put anything you want to in there. Now I'm going to save this again. I'm just going to export it. But this time I am not going to optimize the stitch length. I'm afraid it might take some little stitches out of my cross stitch design. So I am just going to go ahead and say OK. This time I'm going to put my cursor down here. I'm going to call this gift tag. Oh, one, and I'm going to say either the letter K or I could just put the K or I could say the, the name. I'm just going to type Kayla and say export. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I've had a lot of fun bringing this to you and I hope you get use of this for all of your Christmas tags to put on your tree or possibly to use for a luggage date or just for your um, business cards. Thank you. Bye now.